All right, what's going on, y'all? So we back again. This time we're doing Microsoft's uh, E3 press conference. What's going on, y'all? Yo. What's going on, everybody? Yo. Uh, so just like last year, I believe, they started off the show with uh, Gears. And this time they're just showing a little bit more uh, since the game is further in development. Um, game's running on, game is running on Unreal Engine 4, obviously. Looks great. A lot of, lot of weather effects. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of lighting. Um, game is running a lot more stable than last year. We were able to see, actually see the game better uh, this year also. And it's looking like, you know, classic gears. So what did y'all think? Um, personally, I think it looked kind of cool. Um, the ricochet weapon that was being used, if you know the name of that one used in the campaign, so campaign. Saw, bl yeah. saw blade. Yeah. Saw blade. Yeah. I thought that weapon was awesome to see being demonstrated on the, on the actual campaign side. But um, how did you feel about the actual characters in the game? I think they introduced somebody in the game that you guys are familiar with. Uh, you're talking about Marcus? Yes. Yeah, at the end. Yeah. So, yeah, at the end, um, everybody got hyped because we got to see uh, Marcus Phoenix come out of the shadows uh, looking old as hell. We weren't sure if he was actually going to be in this game. We didn't know if he was. I had was an idea because of that teaser that they showed when dude was running yeah. through the, the fields and <laughs> tried to show like a from a back and forth from when he was a kid right. to when he was an adult. So I had an idea, but I, it was kind of cool to see that the fans yeah. were actually happy and hype about that too. Yeah, uh, we didn't know if he was going to be alive or not, you know, because obviously, uh, you know, JD is his son. Uh, we thought like maybe Marcus had died for, or something like that, but at least we know now he, he is alive. Uh, we'll probably play uh, be an NPC cameo in the game. So yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's nothing wrong with a little fan service of showing Marcus Phoenix. That's yeah. that's pretty dope. And I think uh, with them going back to the original Gears formula, I think it's going to be great. Uh, the gameplay looks great. Visuals look great. Mm -hmm. They're on point. Yeah, uh, some new weapons, um, new horde of enemies, enemy types. Uh, so overall, the game is definitely looking uh, fantastic. Then, Recore. So one thing I got to say about Recore is the trailers of this game do not do the game any justice Just at all. Because we were able to see Recore was playable on the show floor, and the trailers really don't show you what you're doing in the game, unfortunately, and I never could figure out why. I thought the game was just, uh, they didn't have enough progress um, in the development to show off the real gameplay, but no, when you, when you watch somebody play it, when you play it, you know, I wish they would just show that in the trailer, because trust me, the game plays great, it looks great, it's a, it's, it's a lot of fun. So I don't know why they didn't, you know, uh, do a better showing of that game. I love the concept of it, you know, you uh, being able to change, uh, you know, the robot's form and everything depending on the situation. From what I was um, watching on the show floor, people were playing the game, and as a buddy of ours, Cameron, told us that when I first seen the gameplay, or when I first seen CG, I thought the game was gonna be like this RPG experience to be taken serious, although it has features of like fiction and just sci-fi. But as hearing from people, like I said, a buddy of ours, it was more of an arcade experience, which I was kind of shocked and just not, like I was a bit surprised. But I mean, overall seeing people play it, yeah. Coming from what they show, showed us at the Microsoft conference, I thought that was a bad display and demonstration because it actually looked a little bit more fun when it was on screen at the show floor versus the Microsoft conference. Yeah, so. Yeah, I pretty much feel the same way. I mean, in, 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 the, in the trailer, it pretty much just showed us that, you know, depending on your situation, you can change robots and things of that nature. But it really never explains exactly what you're doing in this game and things of that nature. So. You need to actually get hands on for yourself. I mean, I was speaking to one of the reps that were there, letting people online, asking some questions, at least getting familiar, familiarizing myself with what the game is about. So, I mean, still, I think it's great to see that there's still another um, exclusive coming from Microsoft. So, I mean, I'm not sure. I think it is coming out for Windows 10. Yeah, it is. yeah. yeah most uh, every uh, game that's every yeah. exclusive title will be launching for Microsoft Xbox One and Windows 10. Right. So that that was a big thing. There's going to be you know the whole cross play play feature if you uh buy it on um xbox one you will also get Demo. the pc code to play it to play it on um the windows 10 uh you know application I'll, I'll, just by the way i know they said something about the demos as well but also i know microsoft announced that your progression and every game that you play um that's exclusive to microsoft you can transition or from PC where you left off over to Xbox One. So I thought that was pretty cool too. And when you buy one title 
from one platform, you still are able to get the other side, um, the other platform for free. So if you buy it on PC, you'll be able to get it on Xbox One for free. So I thought that was pretty cool too that they introduced that. Right. Sea of Thieves, which I didn't think this was a good showing of Sea of Thieves either. They kind of had this kind of cheesy trailer of people force playing the game, playing the game, forcing it a little bit too much. That you know the whole "Hey, I'm having fun and we're screaming all together." Uh, that this game is really cool type of effect, and I don't think that was the right way to you know uh, you know display the game. I think just show us you know real gameplay, you know not these different people playing um, that seems kind of you know fake. I'm I'm actually really hyped for Sea of Thieves. I mean, me and my buddy Chris here, we were able to actually get into one of the um, what is it, the conference the rooms, media, the media yeah. room, speaking with some of the lead devs on this title, and we asked them, and they mentioned to us about what BG was speaking on, and they said they actually didn't act out at all. What they did was they got a group of um, live streamers yeah, who have contest winners, yeah, were contest winners who have tremendous energy and who have some sense of humor, and allowed them to just do whatever they wanted. So. So, I mean, yeah, it looked like it was acted out because that's what we're used to seeing when there's a game that involves co-op play and team objective. But it was cool to see that and hearing that that was actually on their own. But I think from what we're seeing on the show floor was way better, once again, than what was demonstrated on my, at Microsoft's conference. Yeah. Yeah, I got to agree. When we really talked to the devs, I mean, it kind of summed up everything that we've seen at the conference. They're really talking about really creating a magical experience and, and just being a pirate. And, and that's, I think that's what it's all about because what we've seen at the conference is kind of the same thing we've seen on the show floor. People were kind of yelling, screaming, laughing, and just really having fun and just kind of creating their own memories. And then the devs really touched on that when we spoke with them. Right. I spoke to one of the devs. Uh, give me a little bit more detail. The game is always online. There's going to be ca uh, customization of your character. Uh, you can just travel the world and you'll run into actual, you know, other people all the time. Depending Three groups on, of five, too, yeah. by the way. So it can get a little bit competitive. You mm -hmm. play... You can play any role you want, but I know as far as when you get into the battle, it's really team objective based. Um, so I think it's going to be a fun game to get hands on with. Once again, PC, and they're going to have cross play with PC and Xbox One. Right, and you can com uh, uh, commandeer a ship, and uh, you know there's different roles everybody can play on the ship, and you could just come across other people on a ship, and you can actually choose what you want to do. You can they, they he actually told me they're working on a system um, to actually reward players that if if they want to instead of firing on another ship and creating enemies you can actually you know uh connect with the other players on the ship peacefully and you know they're trying to create some type of Play reward music, system hunt for treasure right give them a reason to not just fire on every uh, every ship in the game uh, from other players and even though that we're talking about you know kind of competitive play we did speak with the developers and they're saying that they're not basing this game all of competitive it's more of just creating your own memory so yeah you can go past another ship and you can see a ship uh, full of pirates playing uh, instruments drinking and partying or you can actually go into battle it's all about what you want to do and I I think that's going to make the experience even better. Right, so Sea of Thieves looks pretty cool. Um, another game I wanted to uh, highlight, uh, We Happy Few, which is a creepy game. One of my personal hypes. Reminiscent of, it reminds me of Bioshock and also this book some of you might know by, I believe the author is George Orwell, um, about a, you know, kind of um, censored world. Uh, I believe the book name was 1984, and I spoke with one of the devs of We Happy Few. Um, she said it is inspired uh, from the book. They took different inspirations but, um, from pieces of literature. Um, and she also actually told me the reason why the characters in this game wear masks is because they, they wanted to save money and time. It's not actually. It wasn't actually because you know uh, because the that's purge the effect, yeah. You know? It wasn't the art direction or the purge um, kind of thing they were going for. It's actually just cheaper and less time consuming if you just put a mask than creating individual characters that all look different. So it's very smart and it actually turned out well for the game. I'm curious. So because I wasn't able to speak to him, I was able to watch some hands-on gameplay. Um, so basically, if so everyone wears a mask, right? It's not that you put one on and you're part of this group. It was really just the fact that they're wearing this mask. Yeah, uh, everybody wears everybody wears a mask. They, they said she said there is a reason they create in the game why they do, um, but originally, you know, it was just to save time and that money. That was unique. And what's so interesting, um, I told her it seemed a lot like Bioshock, 
and uh, she actually told me the lead artist um, who designed all the characters never even played a Bioshock game. So it, it's it's wow. it's wow. so similar to Bioshock, but the lead artist never even played a Bioshock game. So it just happened to be coincidence. Um, Scalebound. What do y'all think about the display of that? I did not like how they displayed it. And that's a game I'm really hyped to play. The person playing it or who, whoever was touching base on that game, I didn't like the the way they demonstrated. In fact, I think also that I noticed, or maybe I'm not too sure, was you being able to control the dragon in that game or give it commands. I don't think you're able to, but just seeing how the person playing the game was playing, it kind of threw me off a bit. I wasn't able to even watch any gameplay on the show floor. But once again, I still got hopes for the game, and I'm still happy, hyped to see what's going to be brought to the table later on. But still, the overall presentation of who was playing that game, I did not really enjoy it. Right. It wasn't a good demonstration. It wasn't like uh, choreographed or orchestrated well. Um, I can't remember if this is one of the games they were playing live. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, it's better to just not play the game live if it means that you're going to have a better demonstration of the game because this didn't really give us an understanding or a us a good visual of, of the game honestly it's co-op right yeah it, I, yeah it was co-op i don't believe that the demo we watched was no, actually co-op no. going on um but yeah it was a little bit messy it was hard to kind of decipher exactly what was going on i'm definitely still looking forward to the game i just think this wasn't a good uh portrayal of it they also uh, announced state of decay 2 uh by undead labs yeah, I thought that was pretty cool, and they introduced co-op into the game. I think that was one of the biggest things that people were um, hyped for and hoping for as well. I'm glad to see that it seems more expansive and huge, a bigger, a bigger world. Um, I played State of Decay 1. I actually did enjoy it. I enjoyed the whole survival and zombies aspect and the whole um, spectrum of it. But seeing that there's a part two in co-op with friends, I think that's going to be a dope experience. Once again, PC and Xbox One. Not sure if they said that's going to be cross-play, but I do see that if you buy it for one game, I forgot what was the term they called it, but I think it's called Xbox All. Any, anywhere. Any, or, anywhere or something. Yeah. yeah, so that being said, I'm just actually hyped to see that when you buy it for one platform, once again, get it for the other one. Also, there was Dead Rising 4. Dead Rising 4 look. Yeah. I enjoyed the hell out of Dead Rising 3. So Dead Rising 4 looked pretty dope. I think they're taking it to like the Christmas type mm -hmm. of theme yeah. to it. So once again, you have customization that's getting even big, bigger and broader in, in a sense. I've seen some hands-on gameplay. You're wearing an armor. You're able to you know, move objects and items around the room and everything. So what do you guys think on the gameplay being shown? It looked real cool. Um, drastic improvement over Dead Rising 3, which gave me motion sickness by the way but I looked at this game they've it seems like they've seriously reduced the uh, you know motion the, blur. the motion actually, blur that's you in asked the game the devs too didn't yeah you know I, I actually mentioned it to the dev uh, he kind of acknowledged it and you know I watched the gameplay with this it, it's there was significantly uh, less motion blur um, I did play Dead Rising 3 on um, Xbox one um, played on both and PC as well yeah I didn't get to play it on PC some of the uh, the PC probably had like a motion blur offset yeah. probably um, some of the uh, games in the Xbox section at E3 were actually running on PCs, so I can't remember. I think Dead Rising 4 was actually running on Xbox One, though. And it was running um, pretty smooth, too. Yeah, yeah, it was running pretty smooth on Xbox One. ReCore, I believe, yeah, they had the ReCore games running on, on PC. Um, so Dead Rising 4 looked pretty good, uh, even though I couldn't finish 3. Definitely looking forward to 4. Forza Horizon 3. That's my game right there. Yeah, I know I'm not a racing fan, so you can talk all about this. Well, Forza, I've been a big fan of Forza Horizon. I know the first Forza Horizon was really just a filler for um, the motorsports um, franchise and series, but it actually took off and has such and was well received by the public. Then they went off with Forza Horizon 2, and with this um, installment, Forza Horizon 3, they're taking it to Australia. You have, um, I think, the transition or just having a more bigger. Um, how is it, how can we say the on online play where people can just join in sessions as you're driving? I thought that was pretty awesome. They're taking it from the terrains to the to the canyons to to different weather patterns. I'm actually really excited for the game. Um, honestly, I was able to get like five minutes in on the game. I wish I could have had more time, but it was running smooth. Uh, one of the biggest games, one of my favorite racing games of all time, next to just the regular Forza Motorsport titles. Right. Um, they also announced some features coming to Xbox One. They've obviously been listening to the fans. Uh, background music, clubs on, on Xbox Live. It's very big. 
It's a very big feature. It's been on Xbox since the first Xbox. They got to keep you going. It's a big feature. Mm -hmm. And looking group, I believe it was named, where if you need somebody to play with you, hard to find good players, um, right? But now there's a feature for that. You know, if you need, if you're about to get in a multiplayer game and you need somebody to, you know, help you on some co-op or something, you can uh, search for players. No randoms, 2K16. Yeah, Ran exactly. Randos are the worst. We hate randoms because we know uh, Xbox is, is definitely a very competitive uh, platform. I'm um, also with Killer Instinct. They've added. They've been adding a lot of characters. General Nam, right? Was yeah, they it? added General Ram um, to Killer to Killer Instinct. Uh, so there's a lot of. Um, Xbox characters they, they've added and you know they've really been supporting that game for, for a long time. What about the Xbox One S? So yeah the Xbox One S, uh, three different models with the One S. Starting at 299 I think is just a 500, 500 gig. gig and then every $50 I believe is gonna go up um, I think to one terabyte and then it's gonna be two, two terabytes. terabytes. So I mean it's I actually seen it up close it's very small um, I haven't, I wasn't able to carry it or hold it, see what's the weight on it. They took out the brick, finally, mm -hmm. behind the back. They took out the brick, but they still added both HDMI ports. I guess people still right. want to watch TV on it. I'm not, I'm not sure. All right, so with the Xbox One S also, they're going to discontinue the whole Kinect board to it. So you will not be able to use the Kinect with it. Also, um, this new Xbox One S, you'll be able to upscale games to 4K, which I think was pretty cool. Um, and uh, the Xbox Scorpio, which... They, which apparently wasn't sub scheduled initially to be at the conference, but because the Xbox, the leaked. news of the Xbox One S leaked, they decided they had to make up. So they had a, a few statements, um, statements in a video from developers in the industry speaking about the Xbox Scorpio and how they are behind it and absolutely support it. Um, it's going to be able to play games in 4K. Um, Streaming as well, they mentioned. They said six teraflops. Yeah. They mentioned that they didn't actually give us the CPU or what kind of dedicated graphics card, right? I or think they the said GPU. eight gigs of RAM still. But um, we had some of the devs from like Fallout 4 speak on it, and they were like that it was running amazing. Um, it kind of threw me off a bit, and I, and BG, I, I know BG agrees with me because when you bring out something like the Xbox One S, and I know it was because it was leaked, that's why they mentioned it. But bringing out the Xbox One S, and now we have three price points for three different versions, and then you want to bring out the Scorpio, you have us questioning of whether or not paying for buying or, or even buying an Xbox One S is worth it. Plus now we don't know what's, how the, the Scorpio even looks. So I mean, it's a little bit difficult. Right, so it, it kind of cannibalizes. Um, the Scorpio kind of cannibalizes the S because if people have enough patience, there's no real reason um, to buy an S. But they actually, I could actually, you know, argue against that myself because the Scorpio is probably going to be pretty damn expensive based on the specs we believe it's going to be. It's not going to be cheap. It's probably going to be over $600. Well, I got to agree with you. I mean, with them announcing the Xbox uh, S, you know, the new sleeker console that's coming out very soon, I think that was a good move. But then turning around and announcing another console that's going to be coming, you know, next year, it was kind of them jumping the gun because... Uh, it was kind of them jumping the gun because I feel like, you know, there's really no reason to release a new console. The Xbox One's doing great. Uh, obviously, the Windows 10 and Xbox One kind of relationship is pretty good. I think they should have just kept working on that. But, uh, I mean, I see why they did it. You know, everything got leaked. But I just feel like they're really jumping the gun and they should keep working on the, the, the uh, potential that the Xbox One has right now. Well, they also announced stuff like, you know, different customizations for your Xbox One controller. Right. Um, Halo Wars 2, which I seen a huge line for that out on the show floor, which was kind of ridiculous. But I actually spoke to someone on that, one of the dev, one of the devs on there, and they made it more simple, uh, like more simple, um, they, for for almost all gamers to get in tune with. But overall, I actually did enjoy their conference. I did enjoy the conference. It was cool to see that they mentioned the Xbox One Us. It was cool to see Phil Spencer um, talk a little bit about what we're going to be receiving later on. I think they showed a little bit of Minecraft, how Minecraft now from the mobile to tablets to laptops to PCs, you'll be able to play online with each other, which I thought was definitely something cool. Um, I like Minecraft, I like even the Telltale Minecraft games, but seeing that you're able to join worlds with um, with either tablets, iOS, Android, I thought that was pretty good, and the mods for PCs coming to the mobile market as well. Right, overall they had a great conference, guys. Any more thoughts? Yeah, I feel the same way. I feel like it was a very solid console, a uh, very solid conference for Microsoft. I mean, they didn't come out, they came out guns blazing, they came out talking about their system. Uh, and it, I mean, it was the same thing. It's very great. Their last year's wasn't bad. This one was better. 
great conference. All right, so that's it, y'all. Thank y'all for watching. That's our review for Peace. Microsoft's E3 conference. Peace. We out of here. Peace. Peace.